In this video, we're going to be discussing a discovery of this very specific organism. This strange thing you see right here referred to as Solarion ariana that was discovered completely by accident because it seems to be pretty rare. But despite its rarity, genetic search suggested that Solarion is actually globally distributed in most of the marine sediments and is present in most locations on the planet, but in small amounts. Which of course suggests that a lot of our evolutionary past is normally still hidden from us, simply because many of these ancient organisms are only present in very small numbers. Or could also be hiding in locations we rarely explore, such as very difficult to reach marine environments. The most common stage is what you see right here, the sun-like cell, more or less spherical or globular in shape, and also producing these numerous stocked appendages, or I guess like sun rays, radiating outwards. These unique structures are referred to as celestiosomes. And Solarian uses these celestiosomes to actively capture and then immobilize bacterial prey, which basically suggests that it's a type of a hunter. Except that, I guess, not a very active one, instead choosing to be immobile and capturing prey as it comes close to it. But the discovery of Solarian Ariane fills a major gap in the story. It's helping us understand the internal machinery of this newly captured symbiont, or this bacterium basically, because the presence of this particular gene tells us that the initial mitochondrion was extremely similar to its free-living bacterial ancestor and seemed to have used very similar pathways involved in the secretion system, something that later became redundant and disappeared completely inside much more complex cells. And so Celerian in this case represents a kind of a glimpse into this ancient stage of our evolution. And taken together, these discoveries reshape the timeline of what's known as eukaryogenesis, the formation of first eukaryotic cells. Here we now believe that the complexity increased inside the archaeal host first, possibly creating a suitable environment, which then followed the incorporation of highly capable bacteria-like mitochondrion that finalized the transition. We're fundamentally clarifying the origin of all cells on our own planet, connecting ourselves directly to some of these ancient archaea and some of these ancient bacteria that existed over 2 billion years ago. Something that was completely impossible to visualize just a decade ago, because none of this was known back then. 